Hey everyone, welcome back to Low Luxury, and today I'm super psyched because we're gonna be taking a look at a few of the shows from the recent Milan Fashion Week, which was online only, right? Thanks to COVID, thank you COVID. And these, I just went in and grabbed the screenshots, so I haven't really paid much attention to them, I haven't analyzed them, so I'm really reacting to these in real time for you guys, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. But the thing is, I wasn't able to grab stuff from a ton of shows, because for the most part, it was really boring. This was not a good fashion week for the most part. I wasn't excited by much of anything. And I just found everything really stale and really old feeling. It just did not feel like a step forward for fashion. But luckily we do have a few big ones to look at. So let's get right into it starting with Prada. So this first look, it's a bit plain. It's a nice long coat. It looks very good. I have a Burberry coat that's very similar. Mine's a kind of herringbone. This looks like it may be the same probably wool, something like that, so not the crazy Prada technical fabrics yet. We'll see if those come into play. I am curious to see what those shoes are, though. They look like some sort of black leather dress shoe. And then we've got a whole lineup of people here. A lot of suits here, a lot of black suits, clean tailoring. And here, ooh, look at this look. So this really reminds me of that Frank Ocean look, that famous kind of security guard uh, valet look that he had with just that little triangle logo Prada branding on it. So this is very similar. He looks like hotel staff or something like that, but very clean, slightly cropped on the pant, very stylish, very in right now. This look is interesting. So now we're getting into whites. So this is a sweater, a crew neck sweater, it looks like over a white dress shirt, but it does have that white triangle logo in white. So some really nice, subtle branding here, very refined, very sophisticated. So I'm definitely into this. Then we get a nice long overcoat and now we're getting into some of those technical fabrics, the nylons. This looks almost like a car coat or something, but definitely a nylon, which I'm into. Prada is so good with that stuff. They're really the only company that executes these fabrics to this level of luxury. The next look, simple, again, sort of a staff look, but with a high-waisted uh, trouser here, which I like, and a messenger bag. I always love a good messenger bag because when I'm going to work, I need something big enough for my laptop. So a lot of the time, a crossbody, a simple small crossbody or fanny pack, something like that, one of these more popular bags, is not gonna work for me. So I'm always looking for a good messenger bag and this looks one of, like one of their classic nylon uh, messenger bags, so I appreciate that. But it does have an extra pocket on this strap, which is one sort of step further of elevating this and putting on a new twist to it. Then we have another all white look. We're kind of in the bowels of some kind of building right here. And again, yeah, the staff look, but it's sort of interesting that that waistline of this shirt. Now we've got another overcoat, this time with the branding. I would much prefer this one to the other one. Um, again, the nylon kind of polyester fabrication. Adding in the logo though is a really important touch, I would say. We've got a guy in the back here with another messenger bag. This one may be leather, so adding up the lux factor a little bit. And again, that little kind of phone cargo pocket on there, which is really chic, I would say. And the leg for the trousers is kind of starting to come out now into more of a flared cut. So this guy's kind of up against the wall in a simple gray suit. That doesn't do a whole lot for me. The suit, it's kind of blah, but some nice clean white sneakers kind of taking maybe a Common Projects vibe off of those, but with a heightened heel. So they're almost like dress sneakers, interestingly. Now we get a really good look at some shoes here. It looks like they're patent leather and maybe some rubber soles. They almost look like Doc Martin soles or something. Then they've got that Velcro over because Prada with the technical weirdo fabrics, they're not just into nylon. They're great at Velcro too. And they're good at those Velcro straps with that branding coming up on the tongue. That is a really, really chic pair of shoes right there. Now we've got an all gray look. This is more of a kind of handyman type of look. And now we're getting into some really interesting stuff, some more sporty looks. You've got a kind of a raincoat on the left here, but it's got this kind of Craig Green dia uh, geometric pattern, like cross pattern going across the chest and that classic Prada red stripe, super, super clean here. I like these a lot. Now we've got a full leather look. This one doesn't do a lot for me. Um, 
I've definitely seen this jacket before. Maybe Rick Owens, people like that. Uh, so this is nothing that special to me. Again, we've got a blazer here. The lapel of that, it's this kind of tiny baby lapel. That is really cool, um, but the shirt underneath is very boring. Some very classic Prada sunglasses though, kind of classic 90s sport Prada. Here we get a good look at that kind of poncho here, and it almost gives me Dexter vibes, like it looks like he's gonna get rained on in blood or something. I don't know, that's where my mind goes. It's screwed up, I know, I'm sorry, but I like the kind of sheerness over the chest and then it thickens out to maybe a double layer down towards the pocket. So there's some really smart stuff going on here. So overall, people were really kind of divided on this collection. Some hated it, some really loved it. I thought it was a really nice collection, especially for the last collection before RAF comes in, right? And that's gonna throw a whole wrench in the works and I'm sure we're gonna be seeing a lot of new crazy stuff. So this was kind of back to basics and there was a lot of fun stuff in there, a lot of really sleek stuff in there, so I'm about it. All right, next up we have something very different, uh, very over the top at times. So I'm excited to see what we've got because we're looking at D Squared, a sort of classic Italian brand, very popular. They are everywhere in every sort of uh, high level department store out there. You will see their stuff. So let's see what they've got to offer for this season. So the first look here, it is just a simple suit. Again, a slightly cropped pant that is super, super popular right now, but kind of also pencil thin, which I really like. I love that look. It's a classic look. Uh, looks like you've got some loafers there, simple tassel loafers. Nothing really important beyond that though. The styling on the movie set is cool. The slick back hair gives it a very 50s golden age of Hollywood vibe. Now this next look, we're bringing in some of the kind of bedazzling of the suit, right? This is a thing that D-squared does a lot and really their tailoring is very boring to me. It has some kind of etro vibes at times. Sometimes they're ripping off people like Dries Van Noten, honestly, in my opinion. Um, so this one, it kind of looks like somebody got dressed at the thrift store, which isn't a bad thing, mind you, but it's also not new. This is a very clean black suit. Again, nothing special. Uh, the shoes are probably the most interesting part of this one for me. And now we get into the crazy branded stuff. So this one obviously is on a woman and maybe a cropped hoodie here, but I thought I had to point this out because you've got that branding going down the sleeve. You've got these crazy branded patches on the hat. And this is where D squared tends to go overboard for me because they are just not, they are not that level of label where their logo plastered on everything really carries the weight that it needs to. It starts to become tacky. This next look, that is a very nice jacket. The color blocking is great. The, the red with the navy blue is always a good pairing, but uh, it's, it's nothing new to me. It's not high fashion to me. The pants are really nice. There's some nice dress trousers, but with an elasticated waist, and that is something I'll always appreciate. This next look is a nice way to do the branding. So there's a kind of cool, maybe motion logo going down the sleeve, I would say, almost similar to what Supreme brands like that have done. So bringing in some streetwear, and then it's on this nice long coat. So you're bringing in some refined tailoring with the logo. And that I think is something that you can get away with and have it still be stylish and cool. So really not much to speak of there. It was D-squared being D-squared. They're always gonna do what they do. They're never really gonna do anything that interesting in my opinion, but there was some cool stuff on offer there, so I enjoyed seeing it. All right, next up, I'm really excited to go over this one because we're looking at Xenia, right? And he just did a collaboration with Fear of God. So I'm really interested to see how that collaboration with a kind of luxury streetwear giant could bring some new things into the label, which is a label that I've always really enjoyed, but has also become a bit stale at the same time. So let's see what we've got. So this first look right away, I can see some of those fear of God elements because Xenia really does not do oversized that much as far as I've seen in the past. But this is a very oversized jacket with some very oversized cargo pockets, and it's a really cool look. Now we're getting into some prints, another thing that uh, Xenia has historically done really well, and this kind of deep zipper, so you get a really deep V going in. 
and I like the fit of that. It's got a nice flow to it. And that belt is very cool as well. That's a really interesting kind of silhouette of belt that I haven't necessarily seen before. And now we've got a kind of printed shirt. This almost gives me Palm Angels vibes. So again, I'm seeing more kind of streetwear luxury elements coming through here. The tie across the shoulder is cool. It's almost like a crossbody, but obviously not. That's some sort of linen there. So again, a really interesting look and also significantly oversized, especially in those sleeves. Now we've got a kind of knit open knit crocheted top with a really, really interesting neckline here. So it comes very far over the shoulders. It does not come in towards the neck at all. And then you've got kind of a vest of some kind under it, a kind of animal printed vest, perhaps. Um, I really like this color. It reminds me a bit of Rick Owens. And it's an interesting look for sure. I really appreciate this. Now we've got some suiting coming in, very relaxed fit. Again, bringing in some of that streetwear fitting into the tailoring space. Uh, in this one, it doesn't work as well for me. I don't like this color so much for this suit and the fit on the pants feels a bit lazy to me rather than intentional. This one, you can't see too much of it. This guy's kind of running. Um, the pants, again, kind of a straight cut, slight oversized. And the shirt looks like it may have some kind of cargo elements to it as well. A bit of a kind of safari vibe, perhaps. This is a really interesting jacket. Um, again, oversized. Everything is really oversized. These fits, all of the cuts are way more oversized than I've seen him do in the past. But I really like the way that this coat drapes. And along with that kind of deep V shirt underneath, I can't even tell what it is, but the colors are very luxe, very in right now. It's kind of a off khaki, I would say, but really it's the cut of that jacket that, that does something for me. Next up, we've got a kind of um, kimono type shirt with an ombre effect. And this one, it's a bit boring to me. Obviously, we've seen a lot of these Japanese brands really coming up large lately, and this feels like a bit of a grab for me, so it's not doing a whole lot on that front. This one is some huge exaggerated pockets tacked onto this jacket and it's almost like a bait and tackle fishing vest type of vibe, but with a tailored pant. So it's almost like a suit jacket as part of it. And this is crazy. I never would have thought this would work, but honestly it does. These elements go together very well. And if this guy walked into the office, I would be like, that guy is the most stylish person here. So I'm about it. Now we're getting into some kind of stripes, again with the quarter zip, both stripes in the top and the pants and the handkerchief around the neck. And it's just too much for me. Like I've seen Alawali do this, Bianca Saunders I've maybe seen do this. So this doesn't do a lot for me here. This one I like almost more for the set here. It really stands out amazingly against that backdrop of these flags or whatever they are. Um, the jacket's cool. I like the fit of it. The shirt underneath, not so much. It almost feels like a mistake that the jacket is covering up. Here you can't see too well what's going on, but there is a pretty impressive printed shirt going on. There's a lot going on there and you can't see all the details from here, but it does catch my eye in a way that I like. This guy here, the color of those pants against the jacket is really nice. I don't like the color of the shirt underneath though. I think it's these handkerchiefs on these guys that's not working for me. I don't like that pattern and I don't think it's fit all that well with any of the pieces they've been paired with. But that being said, this guy's almost wearing a blouse underneath it looks like. It looks more of like a women's wear piece, but it does work and I like the print. The jacket's cool and that belt cinching around the waist, again, very women's wear, but I really like the way it looks. And that's it for Xenia. And there was some really interesting stuff here and it's getting me really interested in this designer. Once again, something I hadn't felt in probably a few seasons beforehand. So I wanna see more of this and I wanna see where it goes. All right, next up we have Versace, and they're a brand that obviously can go into tasteless really quickly, but I do think their menswear is actually better than their women's wear. I think that their style works better on a man in this day and age than it does on a woman. So I'm definitely interested to see what they've got to offer, although they didn't show a whole lot in the video, but we've got a few things to look at. 
So right off the bat, we've got these guys kind of coming into the studio. The one on the right has a very classic kind of Baroque Medusa head track top, but it's kind of split and it's got a diagonal coming up here. So it's very sporty. I like the color blocked stripes. And on the left, this actually is far more interesting to me. It reminds me of some of the stuff that Kith has been doing lately with their recent collections. It's got this kind of very interesting Eastern vibe to it. And I like how the colors kind of switch between the shorts to the top and they kind of swap over diagonally with the color blocking like that. So I think it's a really cool look, honestly. Are they tacky? Yes, of course they are tacky looks, but it's Versace doing Versace and they're doing it pretty well here. Next up here, we've got a few looks, some women, some men. Off on the right, it's just too much going on. Again, a classic Versace thing. Um, each piece on its own, I guess the top is cool, the all over Medusa heads. The fabrication looks like it might be some kind of silk or satin. It looks very luxe. The shorts are really bad, like just not good at all. Lose those completely. I do like those green socks and I like how they contrast with the gold. And it looks like we've got a new pair perhaps of the chain reactions on feet, which I'm always into seeing. On the left, we have a look that is a bit mm, reminiscent of maybe some other designers, I would say. So you've got that hole right at the chest. Obviously, Off-White has been doing a lot lately with that theme of air and the holes in the different pieces. Uh, Craig Green has a piece from, I think, one season or two seasons ago with a hole right there in the chest. This one's just a bit bigger. The shorts are quite Rick Owens to me. That is a famous kind of Rick Owens silhouette for those shorts. So that look is a bit rough and honestly questionable in many ways to me. This next look is absurdly over the top. You've got this bucket hat, which might be my favorite piece of the look. Uh, the matching tracksuit, I can't stand this pattern. It just hurts my eyes. It's the colors and the way that it mixes. It just looks really, really bad. So give me the bucket hat, lose everything else. We have another bucket hat here. And again, I'm about the bucket hat. I like the print. I like the sizing, I like the fit, all that is working for me. And that shirt underneath the kind of bedazzled, sparkly shirt, I think is really nice, really um, impressive looking. It's over the top, it's crazy, but would I wear it? Hell yes, I would. Again, the whole, the grommet and the tailoring, no, it's been done before and it's been done better. So Versace, there are signs of life, but there are also signs of, uh, so we'll leave that behind and we'll hope for better things next season. All right, now we are gonna look at Etro, a very over the top and flashy designer, but also one that has kind of been in the same mode in the same stylistic rut that they have been for quite some time. So let's see what we've got. So first up here is of course, the crazy prints. I do like the Patrick element of them in that top. I don't like the styling. I wish he just put it on. I don't like the hands in the pockets and the jacket just over the shoulders like that. That is a no-go. The shirt underneath is just way too loud for me. The pants look really old. Those look like when I started wearing skinny jeans when I got into emo and I started using my mom's really worn pants because they were really tight like that. So that's a no. The socks clash, that's a no. The shoes are nice. This next look is an interesting one. Um, the fit of the pants is cool. Again, the crop with the slight flare at the ankles is a good look. And the shirt underneath that embroidered kind of pale blue shirt is very wearable. The jacket, again, just wearing it over the shoulders and it's also boring. So that's not doing a whole lot for me. And that oversized, potentially leather bag is also a bit meh. It looks kind of like an old paper bag that you get at the supermarket. This is a very nice pattern. It looks really luxe to me, but when you put two of them together, whatever that is, the cardigan or jacket and the sweater underneath, it becomes too much. This is an interesting kind of camo leather jacket, maybe bomber jacket. I do like it, but there are a lot of houses that have done the same style and done it better. Um, the shoes, again, are a bright spot here. I would wear those in a heartbeat, but the rest of the look is pretty meh. 
Again, we're getting kind of into the camo, but now it's starting to look kind of like feathers, like peacock feathers or something like that. The sweater underneath, I believe that is a, is a sweater. I like the color and I like how it matches with the socks. So finally, I'm liking the socks, but um, the jacket itself is pretty forgettable to me, as are those pants. And I'm starting to get tired of these pants because they've been on like every look so far. This look has a whole lot going on. It looks like maybe going on safari, but in the 70s, perhaps. It's this kind of crossbody bag that's hanging off, which is a really interesting look. It kind of looks like a Happy Meal hanging off a strap, and I'm honestly here for it. Um, the look beyond that, though, it's a bit childish in a way that isn't necessarily cool, but becomes a little bit um, in poor taste. This suit is really crazy and it's hitting my eyes in all the wrong ways. Um, I don't like the fit of it and the pattern on there is just a little bit too quiet to do what it wants to do, but a bit too loud to blend in. So it's really failing on multiple fronts here. The bag is a bit of a ripoff of the Louis Vuitton keep all, I would say. So again, this look is a fail. This one right here is I think the best look we've had all show. We've got a nice little graphic button down shirt tucked in very nicely. And that shirt is really awesome. I would wear that. I have a Paul Smith shirt that reminds me quite a bit of this that I love to wear. So this is something I think is very wearable and very modern as well. And that bag, again, I like that quite a bit, even though it is also, again, reminiscent a bit of those Louis Vuitton bags, the soft boxes. So maybe get a new bag designer with some original ideas, Etro, think about it. Now this look is a bit out of left field for me. We've got a denim jacket with some sort of print, paint, staining, acid, wash type of thing going on. And this just does not fit with the rest of the collection. I'm not seeing the message here and it's not really working for me. Uh, we're seeing some sandals here, which we did see in a previous look or two, but this fabrication is a bit better, I would say. So I like these more so far. And that's the end of Etro. Obviously, there are always questions with Etro also of appropriation and where they are getting their inspiration and prints from. And I did see a little bit of that here, but luckily not too much, which I think is the most we can ask for from them. Hey everyone, all of my technology kind of went haywire there just as we were getting into the main event really of Milan Fashion Week. And that is of course Gucci, so let's dive in. So this first look here, the first thing I wanna point out to you is you can see this little post-it note. It's kind of covered up by that middle picture, but it says Danielle, and then under that it says women's ready to wear designer. So all these models, they're actually people that work at Gucci, they're designers and such. And I think that's a really cool way to give back to the people that make these clothes, right? So obviously the standout piece here is that kind of plaid tartan coat. It looks like probably a wool, something like that. It's very British. I could see somebody like Vivian Westwood, uh, McQueen, maybe even Burberry doing something like this, but it doesn't read so much as Gucci to me, although it is a very impressive coat and very wearable. The striped shirt underneath doesn't do a lot for me. Uh, everyone and their mother has done a black and white horizontal striped shirt. It's nothing special at this point. The pants are something interesting. You've got maybe, they don't look like denim to me. They have some sort of shine, maybe some sort of velvet. So that is pretty cool. And they're slightly oversized, but not wide oversized, more length oversized, interestingly. And then I think that may be a sort of leather GG monogram print tassel loafer, which is something new for the brand, I think. Next up, we've got a really impressive jacket here. I really like the contrasting colors. The navy blue with the brown is always a really great mix. And of course, you've got, again, the GG all over. I think the cuffs, though, might actually be the coolest part of these. It looks like they're leather, and they add a nice little element there. And again, we have these uh, velvet or maybe suede trousers here. And these ones have a flared cut, which is very much in style right now. I think there may be a graphic shirt under there, or is that the sort of handkerchief? It's hard to say, so I'll defer judgment on that. This next look with the stars, um, as a shirt, I don't really love it. It looks like a sort of camp collar shirt with all these black and white stars on it. That looks a bit 
maybe Saint Laurent to me. It doesn't feel Gucci. Although in the shorts, I feel it works better. From a distance, it starts looking like Paisley, and for some reason, a Paisley short always looks great. The jacket is something very historically Gucci. That color and that cut is something that they did even long before uh, Michele came on board. I think most interesting here are those shoes. I don't know if those are a new colorway or a new updating of the Ultra Pace sneakers. It's hard to say for me from here, but I do like the juxtaposition of the yellow and the black, and I would like to see more of that. It's also kind of reminiscent of the more recent Balenciaga sneakers, like the Tyrex, and even going back to the track. So I wanna see more of that. Here we have a really sort of loud coat, and this one's really blending the lines between menswear and women's wear, which is something Gucci has been doing for seasons now, and I love it, I'm all for it. Um, the design itself feels a bit dated to me. There are obviously ways to do floral that work really well and are really impressive and are really modern, but this I'm not sure is it. Now here with these shorts, I think they're Bermuda shorts, this floral fits a lot better for me. It's bringing in a little bit of that Palm Angels feel, that Jacquemus feel, and then you've got this denim vest over it, definitely distressed at the hem and at the shoulder, but the shoulders come out a bit further than I'd say you'd expect from a vest, so it gives it a kind of strength that's interesting. And also styled with a beanie, I will say. And again, those sneakers, a new colorway here, definitely vibing those. And here we've got a floral blazer, and it looks like that may be some sort of silk or satin blazer. And this is again, a floral that I think is a bit more impressive. I think those colors are a bit more luxe. It's a very deep emerald green, which I like a lot. And then you've got these Gigi monogram pants, again, with the sort of wide ankle and yeah, I, I like this look. It's a bit much, and again with the beanie, you don't see beanies that often anymore, but they're everywhere in this collection, which is interesting to see. Wow, and now we've got this same print in like an oversized shirt, maybe a sweater or something like that. And this I love. I like this version of this pattern a lot more here than I did on the blazer, because I think it really works for this cut, and I think it works for just this type of garment. And you can also see here they're continuing in the bag with their collaboration with Disney, which is honestly one of my least favorite luxury collaborations, I'd say right now, because it didn't bring anything new to Gucci. They really just kind of stuck Disney characters on classic silhouettes, which I guess is good for Disney, but I don't see how that benefits Gucci. It's just Disney on a GG bag. This coat is absolutely insane. That's really classic luxury stuff with a kind of exploded GG monogram and then these diagonal stripes. It's very classic luxury, you know, Gucci, Fendi, Chanel. They do these beautiful, I'm guessing that's like a mohair coat or something like that, maybe even something more luxurious than that. I also like this patch that's going on at the cuff of the jeans that kind of 60s, 70s Gucci logo they've been using the past couple seasons. And I think that's a nice way to liven up just a plain blue jean. This look is really striking. Um, the pieces on their own don't scream anything too exciting. You know, it's a nice cardigan. It's some nice short shorts, some nice loafers. But when you put them all together, it has this very childlike schoolboy look, but in a very, very um, chic way. And in this look, we're bringing back some of the nautical elements that Gucci's been playing with for a few seasons now. I personally have one of the more nautical uh, ocean themed polos. But when you start repeating that anchor over and over like that, I think it starts to cheapen it a little bit and it gets away from the sort of luxuriizing. That's a terrible word. Please never quote that. Don't ever remind me I said that. I regretted it immediately. But I think there's more high fashion ways to do a print and a theme like that. Here we've got a rugby shirt underneath a blazer. Um, th with the contrast, it's hard to see exactly all the details with the blazer. And the rugby shirt, again, Gucci has done this for a while. I have a very similar one, almost identical to this, just some different colors. 
and it's fine to do the same thing you've done before, but I'm always hoping to see something new, so this one's pretty forgettable for me. Now we've got another brown plaid look going with that kind of color scheme here, and it's nothing that exciting. Um, this is not what I would buy, or I don't think many people would buy when they walk into a Gucci store, but the brown juxtaposed with the green of the graphic tee underneath is a good mix. Here we've got just a simple sweater look. Uh, the fit, it's got kind of a cropped sleeve, which is interesting, but the pattern there feels very old to me. It's really uninteresting, and I don't think it's that flattering and doesn't look great on him, unfortunately. The cooler part here is that bucket hat. Obviously, bucket hats are super, obviously bucket hats are super popular. Gucci more than anyone potentially. And this one, they've kind of made it more interesting and added a new twist with these extra long laces coming down to tie it up with. So I really appreciate that. Now we've got some polos coming in. Of course, the GG polos are a staple. This one in a brown and a contrasting collar, which I do like. And then this sort of cream brown beige uh, cardigan over the top of it. And for some reason, that is a color that always works really well with knits. I'm guessing this is a cashmere or camel hair blend, something like that, because that always works really well with that color. You know, think about Loro Piana, great Italian brands like that. They do this really well. Now we've got a suit that is just so extra. I don't think I could ever pull it off, but if I saw someone wearing it, my mind would be blown. So obviously it's a green all over GG. You've got the flared ankles for the trousers and you've got some nice pinstriping contrasting. It looks like navy blue or maybe black around the edges of the blazer. So it's, it's a strong look. Classic Gucci, especially for uh, Michele's run. So nothing mind blowing, but it's a good suit for sure. Here we've got another one of these sweaters, this time in a V-neck, but it's that same beige color. The GGs in this case don't work as well for me. It almost looks like knockoff Gucci. Obviously it's real Gucci, but it looks like something that somebody wanting to do Gucci would do, but not something that Gucci themselves would do, if that makes sense. Uh, the trousers are actually more interesting to me. That pattern is really deep and really interesting. Now we've got a pink suit here, and it's got a pattern inlaid in it, but it's really nice and subtle because it's a pink suit with this kind of white detailing. So from a distance, it looks like a really nice pink suit, and as you get closer, it becomes crazier and crazier. So I do appreciate that. And again, when you style it with a beanie, that does something really interesting to kind of add some street into a very tailored look. Now this is crazy. I'm guessing this is a jacket, just judging by what Gucci tends to do. It's hard to see with the post-it note over it. But these extra loud jackets are something I've never been a fan of. They bedazzle the hell out of them. They charge like six, $8,000. And obviously there are people that are buying them, but they're buying them because they're so extra and because they're so expensive and bedazzled, not because they actually look good, I don't think. We're continuing with the polos. This one, a striped one, very boring in my opinion. And again, a nice cream cardigan and the bucket hat. So we're starting to repeat looks here. So I wanna see something new coming through. Now we've got a striped jacket. Again, that color, I'm really enjoying this color in this collection, I will say that much. That brown is a really good look with uh, Michele's designs. But I think the most interesting part here is this cross-stitched rope uh, whatever neckline they have, like it's a V and then it's stitched up there. And I really wish I could see more of that and understand what's going on there because that's really what catches my eye here. This one, again, we've got the plaid over shirt. I saw Balenciaga do this just a couple seasons ago, so it's nothing new and doesn't feel like Gucci. Uh, the pants, we, this is just a new color of something we've seen many times in these previous looks. And it looks like we have a graphic underneath, and I believe that says Flash or maybe something like that. Very cartoony, very Saturday morning cartoons. And that I think is the wrong direction. There are a lot of houses that could do that and not super high luxury houses. This is something I'd more expect from that lower level kind of luxury department store brand. So it's not the right direction in my opinion. 
And that's Gucci, and it really did feel like an epilogue, a lot of building on things that Gucci has done for the past few years, and just moving on with them. But calling it epilogue hints to me that maybe this is the end of something, and in the future it will be moving to something new. And I do hope we see that, because I think something new is kind of needed here, despite the fact that there were many really nice pieces. So that's everything we've got for Milan Fashion Week Spring Summer 21 menswear. Thank you so much for watching. Take a look at the other video on screen here. Subscribe to my channel while you're at it. Like this video and I'll see you next time.